Hello and welcome to Focus February, visionaries. Welcome to another episode of Creating the Vision, and we are in week two of our Focus February. I hope your month is going really well, and I am excited to continue digging into my process, executive vision imagery. If you didn't listen last week, I, I highly encourage you to go back and listen. It's about a 15-minute episode on your word of the year, truly defining, outlining, and understanding how powerful your word of the year can be in getting you to where you want to go for this year. So this week's episode is focusing on step two and three of my process. That is core values and a mission statement. Both are vitally and equally as important. Actually, one is imperative and dependent on the other. Without core values, it's going to be really hard for me to write my mission statement. But the impetus for both of these pieces of the process were truly rooted in me getting to know who I am. And if you've never struggled with knowing who you are, kudos to you. I think you're a fabulous, fantastic human being, and I need to probably pick your brain. But as I have found in most experiences in my life, in working with people, coaching people, and in people in leadership development throughout not only my corporate career, but most especially throughout my time working with companies um, and organizations and nonprofits and individuals and helping them build out and create the vision for their future, I have found that we don't fundamentally know who we are. We don't know what we want, right down to the, our favorite colors, our favorite books, movies, songs, uh, what we like to eat, etc. At our core, we sometimes find it difficult to recall what is most important to us or what we gravitate towards, what lights us up, what makes us happy. And these are pieces of us that if we do not know what they are, it makes it really hard for us to represent ourselves to other people. How can we put our best foot forward if we don't even know which one's our better one? I'm right-handed, but I think my left one's actually a little bit better. Anyway, so I, I focus a lot on this piece of the process. It is something that takes the longest time to marinate on, to produce. And it's a piece of the process that is constantly being tweaked, just like your goals should be. Let me take you back to some of the science that I've shared in the past. Less than 3% of people write their goals down. Less than 1% of people actively work on them daily. So less than 1% of the population is actively working on their goals daily. They're in them, thinking about them, tweaking them, figuring out what's next, outlining and defining what those manageable tasks and steps are. So therefore, it's pretty obvious to delineate that most of us are walking around relatively aimless about the life that we're living. We think of goals. We think we write down our goals. We think we're focused on our goals potentially, but we're not because they don't teach us this stuff in school. They don't teach us how to truly define and understand what it is we're working towards. I find this specifically when I work with kids and with children in middle school and high school. They typically have an idea or they have a basic goal, but then getting there can become overwhelming to them. And that's because we make it overwhelming. So we got to break down the process. But before that, before we even get to that piece of the process, I would argue that it really, the work we have to do with ourselves and especially with our children, this starts very young, is helping them understand and identify the core values that they have at that moment in their life. And your core values are going to change. They're going to change because things in your life are going to mean different things to you throughout your life. Before I had a family, having a family wasn't necessarily one of my core values. I was very focused on having a career. I was very focused on a lot of the opportunities that I was experiencing and that I was capitalizing on. I was focused on my pageantry. I was focused on building out my platform. I was focused on my sorority life. I was focused on college life. So those were some of the, the pieces of me that made up my world at that time. Being a really good mom wasn't a part of my world at that moment. And that's okay. But this is why we constantly have to work on ourselves and do the work to understand who we are.
So core values and mission statement are huge. Companies have them. We know, sometimes we know what they are. If you work for a corporation or a company and you don't know what their core values is, I highly suggest that you ask for them or request them or go back to your HR handbook if you even have one or it was given to you, but somehow figure out what the core values are for the company that you're working for. Because I have had participants in my workshops come up to me and express that they are in disalignment with the company that they work with, that throughout the exercises and throughout the process of executive vision imagery, they have realized that it was actually time for them to face what they've known all along. And this was validation and confirmation for them that they needed to pivot and they needed to go in a different direction. So I say to you, do the work, take time to understand who you're working for and why you're showing up every day to work for that person. Because it will benefit you in the long run to know those things. A mission statement, typically like nonprofit organizations, even corporations, they all have a mission statement. They call it a either a vision statement, a value statement, a purpose statement, a mission statement, whatever you want to call it. I personally pr prefer mission because I feel like it's what I'm deployed to do in my life every day. I don't think it has to be used in a negative connotation. It's not like I'm out there every day, like completing missions. Uh, but in my own way, I am. In my own way, I'm working towards my goal every single day. And so therefore, that is my mission. That is what I'm leaned into. That is what I am working through and processing every single day. So think about that. Like I said, these two pieces of the process are the longest and the most involved pieces of of the work that I do within companies. This is why I work with them all day because this chunk of time takes a good 30 minutes, 30 to 45 minutes for each. And sometimes you're just barely scratching the surface, which is why you want to go back and revisit this. But I cannot stress to you enough to do the work. Take time, set aside time to do the work. Core values are those most valuable principles to you. They're the aspects of your personal, professional, and academic life that you hold on to fiercely. And if you are watching this on YouTube, or even if you are listening, I am pulling this directly from my workbook that I use with corporations. It's 85 pages of yummy goodness, uh, plenty of space for you to pour into yourself, but it gives you the opportunity to share what your core values are. It gives you a lot of space to write those out. It also gives you space to revisit them throughout the year. If you find that you become in disalignment with your original thoughts, you write them out, write out the core values you set for your life or the ones that you want to start working on improving. If it's honesty or integrity or character or a good heart or humility or kindness or trustworthiness, you name it, whatever those core values or those core principles that you want incorporated into your life, leading with intention and purpose and leading with value, serving others. MMS Consulting Firm, when I sat down to do this for how I wanted my business to be seen in the community, how I wanted to show up for myself and my work every day, these were the things that I wrote down. Core values are the fundamental beliefs that you have about your life, the way you choose to live your life. They guide your behaviors, your decisions, and actions. They bring about a sense of purpose and self-worth. They remind you what's important to you and what you want more of in your life. So think about what you want more of in your life. Is it more good people? Is it more fun times? And then align those with principles, with values. And if you're struggling, do a quick Google search. Find some really good core values that you could potentially pull from, siphon from. You don't have to reinvent the wheel, but think about what aligns with you and your purpose and what you're trying to accomplish in this life. And then write them down and be steadfast in committing to them and in honoring that commitment to them. So that's core values. All right, moving along to the mission statement. I'm gonna, we'll link the workbook too as well if you want to order it. It's only $14.97 on Amazon and I always say it's the gift that keeps on giving because you can go back and revisit it. You should be revisiting it. Write your name on the front of it in Sharpie and make it your little living Bible that you carry with you. It's your Bible about yourself. It's all the things that you want to achieve and accomplish. We need to be revisiting them because as I said earlier, only 1% of people are actively in their goals daily and we need to increase that number. I want to get that percentage up to 20 to 30 to 50 to 100% of people. I want us to be so dialed in in what it is that we're working to achieve 
that, man, we light this world on fire. Okay? All right. Heading on to mission statement. Okay. And yet again, reading from the workbook because this is my little Bible. Okay. All right. Writing out your mission or your vision statement combined with your core values it helps bring life to the aspects of your goals and habits that you're unwilling to waver from. Remember I said, you've got to be steadfast in that commitment to these goals and to honor your commitment to these goals and that you will strive to protect. We talked about, we talk a lot about in workshops and just in my, in my individual client work about protecting our peace, protecting our purpose, really protecting that and, and harboring that in a way that we would if we were trying to keep our child safe from something or because it's easy for us sometimes to when we flip the script or flip the mindset on ourselves and say but how would i convince another person to do the same and then we got to use that same mentality and that same process on ourselves so if this were me talking to my child my child if this were me talking to a girlfriend of mine and I was saying, gosh, you need to protect your peace, remember, because it's so important to you and it means so much to you. This is what I want to help you do. This is why mirror work is so important and why I tell you guys constantly look at yourself in the mirror, treat yourself as that person that you're talking to and make sure you're leaning into yourself, trust yourself, hold yourself accountable, but honor those commitments. And the mission statement is a way to do that. That is your power piece. You talk about, look, I love a good red suit because it's like a power color for me. It's a power suit. I've worn them in interviews. I've just, I've worn them when I've spoken because it, there's just something about that color that mm, elevates me. And I am a good, warm colored person in my everyday life. I'm all about the grays, the neutral tones, but man, you give me a good red power suit and I'm going to freaking rock it out. Okay. That is what I want you to think about when you think about your mission statement. What is it that you're going to jam out to? What's going to elevate you to that level that's going to make this mission statement resonate with you and that you would want to say to yourself every single day. So I'm going to share mine with you because I figure, you know what? The best way to learn sometimes is by hearing from other people, those examples and sharing. And mine is still a work in progress. I revisit mine regularly and I know that my mission statement is going to change as the seasons of my life change, as the seasons of my business change, as the season of our family dynamic changes. When our kids go off to school and they're in college and we become empty nesters, it's going to be a different approach to my mission statement because I'm pulling in some of those core values and principles that are important to me now that will still always stay there in some way, shape, or form, but how I define their purpose and their mission in my life will ultimately change. It'll become different. Not saying it will become better or worse. It will just become different. And knowing that and creating that alignment between the two makes all the difference. So here's my mission statement. Yet again, you can get it from my workbook. I want you to really lean into this. If you are folding laundry, pause, take a minute, close your eyes, think about what it is that you want. Think about the things that you want to bring into your life to create this mission, this vision, this purpose statement. Okay, so here is mine. I live life in the uncomfortable because it pushes me to become a better human and challenges me to think differently all the time. As a side note, I just had a fantastic interview with a super cool friend of mine from Kentucky this morning that will launch here in about a month. And we talked about what it means to truly step outside of your comfort zone and to push yourself because it challenges you to think differently. That is a core value and a core principle of mine. I really take with me, which was in an earlier episode about cultivating and developing a growth mindset. I've also written about this, but I take with me what one of my mom's coworkers shared with me when I was younger on how he said consistently every single day, he would ask me, what did you learn today? What was something new that you learned today? And if I couldn't come up with an answer, which half the time it's a little annoyed because I'm like, I don't know. There was a lot of stuff that I learned, but eight, nine, 10 years old, a little bit of a punkish side to me. And just didn't really want to answer the question. And I remember one day, I'm like, why do you ask me this every single day? That's so annoying because I'm nine years old, 10 years old. And he said, because if you're not learning, then you're not growing. 
if you're not learning, how can you grow? How can you learn new things? How can you bring things? How can you develop? How can you push forward and move forward? If you stay stuck in the same spot every single day, how in the world are you going to progress? And it was incredibly ingenious. And the other thing is that this man had, I think, less than a high school education. And that really didn't matter because what he knew was that he was smart. He was smart in other ways. And he knew that he needed to continue learning in order to grow and in order to develop into the kind of person that he wanted to ultimately become in his life. And that has stuck with me ever since I was a child. And so when I think about the first line and opening of my mission statement, that's what I'm channeling right there. I want to live life in the uncomfortable because it challenges me and pushes me to think differently. It pushes me out of my comfort zone. It pushes me out of my complacency mode. It pushes me out of the constant monotony of the day-to-day -day and challenges me to think differently. Now, the next line is, my unique perspective is one of a working mother who juggles the day-to-day -day of being a full-time mom with a full-time career. Yes, I'm a full-time mom with a full-time career. Absolutely. That is a huge piece of who I am right now. And that is a piece of my mission because not only do I have to worry about my business every day, I'm a full-time mom who has to worry about three kids and I'm all up in their business too. So that's a lot of business that I'm up in. So when I think about that, and one thing I alluded to just a little earlier was that this is a phase. This is a piece of my life that will change. I will always be a mom, but I won't always be a full-time working mom that is juggling the day to day. Because I have a 16 year old who, God willing, is not gonna give me a heart attack when she gets on the road and gets her license, which she's prepared for, ready for, but we're just extra cautious making sure that she can really handle that wheel. But, and I've got a 14 year old who's going to be following in her footsteps in a year and a half, two years, and it's going to be right where she is. And then those two are going to go off to college and it's going to be us and our little one. It's going to be the three of us. We're going to be the three little amigos. And that's going to create a different position and spot in my life there. So keep in mind that you're going to go through seasons of your life and things are going to change. Therefore, your mission is going to change and that's okay. This is why we have to revisit this consistently throughout our life. It's part of the process. Okay. The next part is I value deep connection, fostering growth and development in others and helping people become the most authentic versions of themselves. One of my core values is that I value all people. I value all people. I meet them at the place that they are in their life and that my goal is to not just challenge myself to think differently, but to challenge them to think differently about who they are, for them to own their own worth, their power, their passion, their purpose, their abilities, their talents, and harness that energy for them to become the best freaking version of who they are capable of becoming. That is so much of my work and everything that I work to do every single day with the companies and the corporations that I work with. So I bring that into my world daily. But here's the other thing too. I want to also foster deep connection with my kids. I want to make sure that my kids know that I'm always there for them and that they might not always understand or like what I say to them, but it, it comes from a place of me truly leaning into them and wanting them to become the best versions of themselves. That's not saying this is always going to be a walk in the park and that I'm going to be their biggest fan at all times. I'm always going to love them, but I don't have to like some of the choices that they might make. So we work through it. That's the piece of the mission that I'm encompassing when I think about all of that and writing that. So that's why I say this takes a while because you're truly trying to encompass and put together in one statement all of the things that are so meaningful to you in the way in which you want to, to live your life. My last part is that I thrive when I can utilize my gifts and talents to benefit others. I do thrive. That's when I show up for myself and for the world is when I can pour into other people. And I do thrive when I can utilize my gifts. Whenever I can share my story, share my passion, share my heart, share my mission, my purpose, my vision, all of the things with someone else to bring that out of them and to help them see that they're capable of what they want to accomplish as well. Man, day is done and my life is complete. And then I go to sleep and I hit repeat on that. So it's great. I finish off my statement though by saying my purpose because I have a mission 
but I know my purpose and my purpose is rooted in my why. And so my purpose is to change the world one vision board at a time. I don't often talk a lot about vision boarding in corporate settings. Actually, it's something that within the B2B space, I really don't mention much at all. I tell them that my signature workshop, Executive Vision Imagery, is truly around people and leadership development. I help take employees from stuck in not really knowing who they are to coming out being empowered and powered by their mission, their vision, and their own purpose for their personal and professional life. So I'm helping them to evolve into the kind of human being and the kind of employee that they know they're capable of becoming. Just giving them that little nudge. And then I'm taking the vision board as a supplement to that. That's the piece of it that is really rooted in the visual representation aspect. The vision board, if you've ever made one and you've not really had it work for you, it's probably because you've stuck some lofty pictures of a yacht and maybe a mansion and some other things that those might be great long-term goals. But my vision boards are made yearly, sometimes quarterly, depending on how a client wants them to be done. Listen, I give no parameters on the yes or no of a vision board being done multiple times a year or to separate your boards. I've made travel boards. I've made boards dependent on individual goals that I'm working to achieve. I do multiple boards throughout the year because that's the process by which I work. And that's how I best adapt to the goal setting environment that I'm creating for myself. So you do whatever you need to do. You do you, boo. You figure out the board that it's going to work best for you and go do it. I don't preach or teach quadrants. I don't do any of that stuff. The only thing, if you listen to last week's episode as well, I do say that your word of the year needs to go in the middle. And that is because all roads lead to the center of your board. Science says it about things when we're looking at images, we're looking at the center first and then everything goes out. If you want to get stuck in some of the ophthalmological journals that I have read, they'll say the same. Okay. So it just has to do with how our eyes work. Literally our eyes work that way. So that's why you want to put it in the middle of your board because we are looking at the center of things, not to get off on that tangent, but how you make your board really is to set up your goals. These are the visual representations for your goals. These aren't just fun, cool, crafty pictures that you're like, oh, that's really cool. (laughs) A pool. That seems really nice. If you have no means to install a pool or go swimming, or if your goal is not to get up and go swimming every day because you're working for, say, a triathlon or training for the Olympics, I don't know why you would put a pool on there. Unless it's that you would like a vacation, buy a pool. Okay, that's great. I can go with that. But it needs to align with your goals. And what I'm saying is I think oftentimes when I talk to people who don't believe or buy into the vision imagery process, it's because they haven't utilized vision boards for what they're truly capable of doing for them in their life, which is to set the tone and set the stage for the visual representation for their goals. The core values and the mission statement are an integral piece of that because if we don't have that, we can't get to our personal and professional goals. And half the time we dive into things like our goals and we have completely omitted the word of the year. We've omitted the core values. We've omitted the mission statement and we just, "Hmm, I want to dive into my goals. No, I just want to know what it is I'm going to do. Okay. If I don't know who I am, I can't figure out what it is I want to do. And then I can't define or I can't write a goal on that because I don't know who I am. So that's why you got to figure that out. We got to do the work peeps. We got to do the work to figure out who it is that we are. What are we working to achieve? Why are we signing up for that race? Why are we working for this company? And these aren't things that need to be, that we need to upend our world and say, oh my gosh, I need to quit my job. I need to start doing this. I need to stop doing this. Maybe if that's what you need in your life, but that doesn't necessarily need to be the case. It just needs to lead back to you having a true understanding of why you're showing up in your world every single day. Why are you showing up for your life? And if you're not showing up in your life and for yourself, then what the heck are you doing? This is the piece that is so fundamental and it's why it takes the longest whenever I work with companies. So I want to leave you with that because I want you to now dive into this work yourself. We've linked the workbook. You can buy it on Amazon 
order a few, get your girls together, do a girl's night out, spend some time going through this or spend some time alone. Pull up a blanket, <laughs> sit on your couch or a cozy chair and grab a pen or a pencil. I prefer a pencil because then I can erase and make changes as necessary, although you do have plenty of pages and blank space to work with. But take the time to do the work. Do the dang thing, people, and you will be so glad that you did. Thank you so much for continuing on this journey. This is Focus February, and I want us to truly focus in on who we are working to become, but also who we know ourselves to be. And that in and of itself is, is such a big piece of the work that we do every day in our life. Not every day is going to be perfect. Not every day is going to be fun. I'm not saying we're going to wake up every morning and after we do this process that fireworks are going to be going and we're going to have people cheering us on and all of that. Internally, we can do that for ourselves and we absolutely should. But now we've laid the foundation. We've laid the groundwork to start to begin to do the work. So we got to lay the foundation first so that we can then do the work. Now, as we head into next week and we start talking about these core goals, because you have your core values and you've got your mission statement, you've got your word of the year, you've got that trio, you're ready to go. Next week, we'll dive into core goals and we'll talk about personal, professional, that play and fun goal. And then that little added, which one is going to be your do the dang goal for the year of 2024? I am so glad you are here, visionaries. Thank you so much for being on this journey with me. And I cannot wait to explore your most authentic self.